If you ever had the chance to play on a high refresh rate G-Sync compatible monitor, then it's tough to go back to an ordinary monitor which works at a fixed refresh rate. That is, if the PC this monitor was connected to was configured properly. So in today's video, which was sponsored by ASUS, I will provide you with a quick and easy to follow guide to get the most out of your G-Sync compatible monitor. First, you must look at the manual of your monitor to find out which input supports G-Sync. On the ASUS XG258Q, which I have here, G-Sync or Adaptive Sync is supported via HDMI and DisplayPort. That said, to take use of the full 48 to 240Hz range of this monitor over HDMI, your graphics card and HDMI cable must support HDMI 2.0, otherwise you are limited to a range of only 48 to 120Hz. I recommend that you simply use a DisplayPort cable with which you get the full range of 48 to 240Hz. Next, use the on-screen display menu to make sure that Adaptive Sync is enabled. As Nvidia keeps increasing the list of supported G-Sync compatible displays, it is also a good idea to make sure that you use the latest driver. Then open the Nvidia control panel and make sure G-Sync is enabled. Then go to Change Resolution, select the highest supported refresh rate and click on Apply. Should you own a 4K, Ultra Wide or HDR monitor, then it's possible that by selecting the highest refresh rate you are no longer able to use the RGB color space or a 10-bit color depth. If either of these are important to you, like when you do photo or video editing, then you can select a lower refresh rate here for desktop applications and only have games run at higher refresh rates. Next go to Manage 3D Settings and make sure that preferred refresh rate is set to highest available in the Global Settings tab. That will help ensure that games can run at the highest supported refresh rate of your monitor, which is especially useful when you have the Windows desktop run at a lower refresh rate. The following is essential to get the most out of your G-Sync compatible monitor. For G-Sync to work, you must make sure that the frame rate of a game stays inside the variable refresh rate range of your monitor. For the ASUS XG258Q, that's any frame rate between 48 to 240 FPS. And to keep the frame rate inside that range, you simply use a frame rate limiter. Some games like Overwatch allow you to dial in a specific value for the frame rate limit, which is ideal when you own a G-Sync compatible monitor. Others only provide fixed presets, which might not be very useful. If possible, you should always prefer the in-game frame rate limiter as that usually offers the lowest input delay. But you can also use third-party tools like RTSS to cap your frame rate. Or you simply go with the max FPS feature provided by the Nvidia driver, where you can simply set a global frame rate limit that will be applied to all games. Whatever you use to limit your frame rate, make sure that you use just one of these methods. Never have multiple frame rate limiters compete with each other at the same time. Based on my experience and the results of my input delay tests, I recommend that you set the FPS limiter at least 4 frames below the maximum refresh rate of your monitor. In my case that is 236 FPS as the ASUS XG258Q has a maximum refresh rate of 240Hz. If your monitor has a maximum refresh rate of 144Hz, then set the limiter to 140FPS. Then inside the game you must make sure that it runs in full screen or exclusive full screen mode, which also has a positive impact on the frame rate and input delay. Even though we've selected highest available for the preferred refresh rate inside the Nvidia control panel, you still want to make sure that you select the highest available refresh rate inside the options menu of the game. So now everything is configured properly to ensure that G-Sync is always active. But you might still see some tearing near the lower edge of the monitor. To fix this you must enable VSync, but don't worry, this will not increase the input delay since we use an FPS limiter to keep the frame rate below the maximum refresh rate and so well inside the G-Sync range of the monitor, which is why VSync will not fully engage and take over. If you want to enable VSync globally for all applications, then you can do that inside the Nvidia control panel. However, I recommend that you leave the setting in the NVIDIA control panel alone and instead use the vSync option inside the game, as that might also enable additional optimizations inside the game engine. And now your G-Sync compatible monitor successfully prevents tearing at any frame rate that is inside its variable refresh rate range. 
If you want to further optimize your setup, then you can do one of two things. If you don't want to invest much more time, then you can slightly reduce the impact that a maxed out GPU has on the input delay by selecting the Ultra setting for the low latency mode inside the Nvidia control panel. Or if you want to take it one step further, then for every game you find out which frame rate your system can always maintain and then set the frame rate limiter to that value for that game. If you are willing to invest the time required to play around with the graphic options to maximize the frame rate and find the right setting for the frame rate limiter, then you are rewarded with a consistent as well as predictable input delay and an even smoother gameplay experience as the frame rate isn't changing all the time then. So now you know how to properly set up your system to get the most out of your G-Sync compatible monitor. If you want to make sure that G-Sync is active and see how it's changing the refresh rate of your monitor to match the frame rate of a game and so prevent tearing and stutter, then you just have to enable the FPS counter on the XG258Q monitor and keep an eye on that overlay in the top right corner. And that's all for today. Big shout out to ASUS for sponsoring this video, which, thanks to their support, is also available in German. I also want to thank my fine patrons for their support and if you would like to join them then you can find a link to my Patreon page in the description where you can also find links to other G-Sync related videos. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more, ring the bell to get notified when I upload my next video and I hope to see you next time. Until then have a nice day and take care, my name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.